What is going on guys? It's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about a new study, a new study that was published in the Cell Journal in August 22nd, 2019. This journal actually looks into the molecular processes of what is going on with inflammation and fasting, intermittent fasting to be exact. They looked at 12 normal weight healthy human beings and tested their blood. I'm going to go ahead and break that down for you in this video. Stay tuned. All right, as I mentioned, this was published in the Cell Journal on August 22nd, 2019. This was run by the researcher Stephen Jordan and colleagues. Now, it is super science-y and there's a lot of scientific terms, so I don't want you to get lost and I want to be able to present the information where you can understand it. So I am going to compress it as much as possible and deliver the more important points to you. And of course, if you want to look at all of it for yourself, the link will be down in the description below. So the first thing that they were looking at when they took these 12 individuals was the CCL2 production because the CCL2 is actually a cytokine which recruits things like monocytes and T cells and they use this to combat inflammatory and muscle injuries. One thing with monocytes that can be tricky is that if you have too much monocytes in your body which is a type of white cell it would indicate that you have high levels of some sort of medical issue be it inflammation or cancer or some autoimmune disease, something to that effect could be in your body, which is why you have a high level of monocyte activity. But if you have a low level of monocytes, that can also be bad because that means that you won't have enough to defend yourself in the event that you do get one of these autoimmune disease or blood disorder, what have you. So the researchers put the participants in a 19 hour fast. So essentially, if you're trying to put this into a protocol, more or less the warrior diet, 19 hours of fasting, five hours of eating and to control for light patterns throughout the day and go within the circadian rhythm, it made sure to take blood from the participants around 3 p.m. They also took blood when they were fed and they took blood when they were fasted and they looked at the differences. One really cool thing is that when they were fasted, the monocyte levels actually regulated. They were high during the eating time and they reduced with the fasting to a normal regulated level. And another cool thing is that if someone had a hereditary factor where their monocytes were naturally low and they just had individual monocytes that were really, really strong so the body didn't have to produce more monocyte activity, the fasting did not reduce it below a physiological level that would put them in any type of harm. So if someone had high monocytes, the fasting brought it down to a regulated area. If someone already has a naturally low monocyte, it did not reduce it. It kept it in the stationary area where it was working at its full capacity. They noticed that in the body, through the blood, fasting was improving inflammatory diseases, ensuring that it was fighting against inflammatory diseases by keeping the monocytes at a good level without sacrificing antimicrobial immunity. So other things that would be helping to combat the uh, diseases or the muscle tears or the blood disorders or medical issues, those things were not affected at all. Only the monocytes were affected to ensure that it was at an optimal level. So as they were doing this, they wanted to know what exactly was the mechanism that was triggering this. Why was the body correcting itself and working efficiently to combat certain inflammatory things within the body just because of a fast? They wanted to know if it was related to the insulin. So what they did is they secreted insulin. They injected them with certain glucose to secrete insulin and noticed that the insulin did not do anything to the monocytes site levels so it wasn't the insulin intake this is why i say that intermittent fasting is a total package it's not simply just insulin and because weight loss in and of itself can provide health benefits for your body and gradually bring you into a healthier state, there has to be a connection to fasting to be able to determine if intermittent fasting isolated can create a healthier outcome for you. So 
they know that it wasn't the insulin. What they wanted to see was that if it was just the energy intake, just the energy, the calories that you were consuming. Taking in the nutrition, they blocked energy levels while allowing the insulin to secrete. So they tested them with consuming energy levels and having the insulin secrete, and they noticed that the monocytes were at a high level. But then what they did is they allowed them to eat the food, let the insulin secrete, and used inhibitors to block the initial cellular energy so this is basically the first step of glycosis and they blocked that so they gave that window they gave that grace period to see if the body reacted and what they saw was that the monocytes did not react so it was clear to them that the mechanism that was triggering the monocytes to put itself at a high level was actually the consumption of the energy itself some people think that you always have to have nutrition coming in at an unlimited clip constantly but certain points of keeping nutrition away and not consuming it in daily increments actually can help you because it allows your body to work off of itself and your body can do a lot of efficient things as this study shows when there isn't that energy and that nutrition constantly coming in this isn't about weight loss creating a better system for your body this is about abstaining from taking in nutrition at a constant clip which then triggers certain things in your body to work for you this was a very interesting study and i implore you to take a look at it for yourself all right so this was a quick video just talking about this new study that released i definitely want you guys to take a look at it for yourself so you can see all of the different details but i warn you it is very sciencey uh, there's a lot of terms in there they talk about the actual inhibitors that were used to block the cellular energy so that they can test to see the mechanism of what was triggering the monocyte activity but of course, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that it wasn't too confusing for you. And of course, I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon. And I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!